Hello everyone, this is Cam the Little Giraffe with a video kind of different from my normal ones. Today I'm going to be showing you how to fix a NTFS.SYS or system, a blue screen error on Windows 7 and I think this might also work on Windows Vista, but try it at your own risk and that's kind of the uh, waiver for this tutorial. It worked for me, I got all my files back perfectly fine, nothing was corrupt or deleted or anything like that. But it might not be the same for you. I haven't heard of anyone actually getting files deleted through this method. They've all revived their files, kind of. But there might be a slim chance that they may delete some of your files, so do this. Proceed at your own risk. So, the program you're going to need today for this to work is Linux. And that's kind of a program, kind of an operating system. It's a part, I mean, sorry, Linux Nopix. So, it's Linux Nopix, or Nopix Linux, whatever you want to call it. But it's Nopix, and you're going to need that for this tutorial. And that's basically how we're going to fix this error. So hopefully you have another extra computer around. That's always a good idea to have. It's an old computer that you don't often use. But it's a good thing to have just a backup in case your main one dies. That's what happened to me, and I had a backup computer. So I was quite lucky in this kind of situation. And what you want to do is download Linux. I mean, sorry, Nopix. There will be a link in the description for Nopix and you can download it right there, it's an ISO and I guess I forgot to mention that in the backup computer you are gonna need a DVD burner so you're gonna have to burn the Nopix image to a DVD I didn't try it to on a USB stick but the DVD it's easier to kind of work with so that's what I recommend doing is getting Nopix, the link will be in the description sorry about that and putting it on a DVD on your old computer, burning it to a DVD, it's an ISO image so it'll work fine and then once you've done that, hopefully you know how to maneuver around the BIOS in your computer. Um, basically to get in the BIOS, the BIOS, let's say you have an MSI motherboard, that's what I use. Um, when you start up your computer, it shows the MSI screen and military technology, whatever it says. And when I do that, when that happens, you press, for me it's F1 or delete, I don't know which one, I think that both work, but I just like using both of them. So you click away onto that, and then it'll take you into the BIOS if you get it right. If unfortunately it doesn't load the BIOS and it just goes to the Windows boot screen, you will have to turn off your computer and try it again, the F1 or delete, or look in your motherboard manual for the buttons to get you into the BIOS. So once you're in the BIOS, you want to maneuver to the boot settings or the boot priority, they call it online. And in there you'll probably see the first boot priority is your hard drive, unless you boot from something else like a USB stick or a portable hard drive or the network even, or even a CD. So as the first boot option is your hard drive, Windows 7 isn't working on your computer so it won't boot, it'll just give you a blue screen if you have this NTFS.system error. It, yeah, as again I said, it's a blue screen. There will probably be a picture up on the screen of what it, the blue screen actually looks like. Picture screen on the screen, that's kind of odd. But anyway, once you're back, let's get back on topic here. Once you're in the BIOS, um, you want to maneuver to your boot settings and change the first boot, which is the primary boot, from whatever you normally boot Windows 7 or Windows Vista onto, let's say, to your DVD drive. You need a DVD drive, I forgot to mention that too, jeez I'm forgetting quite a bit in this video, but you need a DVD drive on the computer that isn't working to fix it, so if you don't have a DVD drive, sorry your SOL and you'll probably have to take it into a computer shop to fix it, or you can get probably an external DVD drive, and that might work too, I haven't tried that, but I have an internal one and it works just fine. So. You want to boot from the DVD drive, and then save your settings, exit the BIOS, and restart your computer. And then if you're, if it works right, then it will start up, an Opix screen will come up, it's kind of like a little shell, and it'll say, loading all these files, it'll have a picture of a little penguin, and then it'll get you into the Linux, and it just starts up after a few minutes, after it's figured everything out on your computer. And then I believe, like, you have to get into the shell to fix this error. And But to get into the shell, there's I think it's like a Linux shell or something that's already built into Nopix, but you don't want to go there. You have to go to the... This is kind of confusing, I'm sorry. There'll be, like, a, I'm following a tutorial right now, and I will link you this tutorial if it doesn't make sense. If you want it in text, that'll probably be an easier way to do it. So there'll be a link in the description for this tutorial. So you want to go into your shell, I believe, to get into that. You'll be on the, the Nopix main screen, and you want to press Escape. And once you're in there, it'll be a black screen, kind of like a command prompt in Windows 7, or any Windows actually. 
And then once you're in there, you want to type SU and press enter. So that makes that takes you to the root of your computer's hard drive. So then you can start fixing these files. And then once it once you've typed SU and pressed enter, you want to type CFDISK. So CF disk. And then it will sh it'll show you your partitions on your hard drive. And um, then it'll also show you the file type. And you want to have a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen or whatever. And you want to write down all the partitions that have an NTFS file type beside them. So in this tutorial it says an example is HDA1 and HDA5 or something like that. I think mine was SDA if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I was SDA. So it might, the letters might be different for you. It doesn't really matter. But just write those letters down. And then the next step is you want to exit this CF disk. So I think I believe you just type escape or something like that and it'll just it'll bring you back to the command prompt out of that CF disk area. And then to type the next thing to start fixing the error on your computer, the corrupt error, you type ntfs fix slash dev slash hda1 or whatever your partition is called that has the ntfs file type. And then you press enter. For me, it gave me an error. I was like, what the heck is going on? And I just did the other one and I said, you know, screw this. I'll take it to a shop if it doesn't work. I restarted my computer and booted it from Windows and it worked. So if it gives you an error, for my case at least, that was okay. It still fixed it. But if it gives you an error, don't really worry about that. And type in all your partitions like that. There'll be, don't worry, there'll be the codes in the description if you missed that too. So this is kind of a video and description tutorial. And so the codes will be in the description if you, you have to type them in in the shell again for it to kind of fix the corrupt files. And then it gave, gave me an error at least. It might not give you an error. It'll say it might be successful. I don't know what it would say. But it will work if you do all these steps right. And then you exit out an Opix or you can just hold, turn your computer off by the power button, whatever. And then you can start your Windows again by going back into the BIOS and changing the boot priority back to the hard drive from the DVD drive for the first priority. And then you save your settings, exit the BIOS, restart your computer, and hopefully Windows will boot up, and it'll be kind of a black screen. It'll start checking all your files and fixing the errors that Nopix couldn't fix, and if you're lucky, then Windows will boot, Windows 7, Windows Vista, and it will be fine. But here, uh, there's a word of warning here. If you go into Nopix and just the documents in Nopix, it will read from your hard drive and you can see all your files there. So if you if you're extremely like you want to keep some files that are extremely important to you, you may want to go into Nopix first with like a removable disk or whatever you want to have, like a USB drive, a portable hard drive, something like that, and just copy all the files from your hard drive to your portable storage for using later. And then you'll have them no matter what happens, if this doesn't work for you, which I think, I believe, it's very rare or impossible for this to delete files. And that's kind of the tutorial. And if, you, if you're wondering what kind of, what caused this on your computer, I know for me, I one night I decided to shut my computer down from just holding the power button for seven seconds. If you didn't know, that can shut your computer down if you hold it for seven seconds. And apparently some files were corrupted when I did do that, but it's that's kind of odd, I think, in my opinion, because you think 7 seconds, Windows has enough time to kind of end all your processes in Windows 7 with your processor in 7 seconds. So if you have a decent processor, which I do, I have an i7, it should have shut everything down successfully, but it didn't, and it just shut the computer down. I know it's also like if there's a power outage at your house, you're in a thunderstorm. It, that may happen, kind of like if you just lose power or something happens to your hard drive. So that's kind of the tutorial. I'll be sure to put a link in the description to that tutorial I was talking about that I'm taking this video from. So it's kind of credit. I'm not claiming this is my own tutorial. This is the tutorial I used. It worked for me. And actually, I'm recording this video on the computer that had the error just a few days later. So hope you enjoy this video. Hope it helps you out. Um, be sure, be sh like, please share this around if you ever see this error i don't i'm not doing this for views i'm doing this to help people because honestly it took me seven hours to find a tutorial that would help me and my the goal of this video for me at least is to help people so it won't take them as long as seven hours and it it'll be easy to find the uh, problem with this like i called microsoft for an hour and a half and they didn't know what the hell was going on with my computer so then i just had to go on the internet and search this up and i found it within half an hour so after all that fiddling around i fixed it 
And again, please share this tutorial around. If you see this problem on websites and nobody has an answer, please put this video in. Uh, we want I want to share this around, not for views and money or whatever you want to say like that. I want to make sure that people know how to fix this error and that it's one of the more errors that like that you can you're able to fix easily. So, thanks for watching this video and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.